Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. In this video, I want to talk about the mixing and a little bit about the editing that went into this bedroom version of my song Fighter that I did in this spare bedroom in my house. There's a link below for a playlist that has all the videos having to do with setting up the studio, recording the song. You can hear the song itself, talk about how I recorded and produced it, and then this one talking about how I mixed it. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention in the last video sorry about that, is these background vocals that I recorded, actually, so I started with the background vocals. I recorded that percussion, the boom, 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 then the couple different mouth percussion stuff. And then the before recording the guitar, I actually recorded those harmonies, those ah vocals that were happening. Now, since I just didn't have anything in there to sing along to, I grabbed a note off the guitar and sang and then built the parts out. Well, as you can imagine, building parts out that way, sometimes they're not going to stay in pitch very well because I started on a note that I was remembering from playing the guitar. I wasn't singing along to anything, so everything was a little bit flat. And in general with background vocals, I like to do tuning to get them, especially when they're playing like a pad type part, they need to sound like an instrument. I'd much rather just tune them up and get them nice and tight. So I went through, recorded each part twice. So there are, there are six total background vocal tracks in three parts and then each part is doubled. So I've got um, two of one part, two of another part, two of a third part, panned left and right, and then I recorded each one singing for four bars or through the ah part twice and recorded each one that way. Then I went in and tuned each one using Melodyne, which comes stock with um, Studio One, Melodyne Essential, I believe, tuned them, then rendered that, and then I took those and looped them throughout the rest of the song. Uh, on the lead vocal as well, I did tune that one. Um, it was a little little less aggressive, did a little just overall tuning and then went in and fixed certain notes and polished things a little bit. Uh, if you are against tuning, I completely understand. I used to be that way and I found that I just tend to sound a little better with tuning. It's not an excuse for not honing my craft as a singer, but it is a tool that I like to use. It, my performance was great. I did that vocal in one take and there were a couple spots that were a little pitchy, so I fixed them and I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, that's totally fine. We can still be friends. So let's dive into the mix and I'll show you a few more things. So in the last video, we never actually opened up the mixer window, but here's what the mixer window looks like. If you've never seen one of my mixes before, I try to keep it pretty simple. So all these colored tracks to the left, from the purple to the left, these are all my audio tracks. Uh, percussion is in blue. Um, I routed some of the claps to their own bus. There's two sets of claps that each have their own bus. I'll show you that in a second. Three guitars are here in green. The ahs are here in purple. And then these tracks here, these two red ones and this yellow one are my master tracks. Normally I route the vocal through a vocal bus. This time I just put the vocal track here because I was in a hurry. Um, but all my percussion comes through here. All my guitars come through here. This is my lead vocal and then all those background vocals come through there. To the right of here, these white color tracks are my effects. I ended up not using a slapback delay, but I used a little bit of an analog delay on the background vocals in addition to this plate reverb that was the core of that background vocal sound. So let's start with those, why don't we? Uh, here are the background vocals in their raw form, just panned left and right. I've well, that's not it, here we go. One mistake you don't want to make when recording these is to stand too far back from the microphone. It gives you a nice thin sound, which you typically want, but in case you wanted a little warmth in there, it's hard to re reintroduce that warmth without getting a little closer to the mic. So I used uh, the fat channel here in Studio One. What did I do? I just used it for EQ. So I took a little bit of the lows out and a little bit of that mid-range at 360 and actually took a little bit of top end off because it was getting a little bright. And I'll talk about that in a second as well. Then I added a compressor to just kind of smooth things out. This is that butter compression I talk about a lot where the uh, threshold is all the way down and I bring the ratio up just a little bit so there's this constant compression that's happening. So here it is without the EQ and compression, then I'll turn it on. Here's with. Smooth, consistent, not thick and warm, not sitting on top of the guitars, but working well. Then I sent them to this plate reverb which has a huge tail. It's literally just a plate preset that I crank up the length of the tail. This one's at like four and a half seconds. And then I EQ the reverb to get rid of a lot of the mud that tends to come with some of the reverbs that don't sound super great out of the box. A few tweaks, you can make them sound good. And then I add an analog delay 
I'll turn off the reverb for a second so you can hear that. That just lets, it gives it a little bit of a repeat on the vocal, so it sounds like even more than six singers. Can you even hear that in the mix? I don't even know. It acts more like a pre-delay on a reverb, is more of how I hear it. But all together, here's what that sounds like. Nice tail on that reverb. And that's really all the reverb in the song is on those. Everything else is dry. Let's look at the uh, the percussion because that was kind of fun and interesting. So here's the overall, the three main percussion parts during the choruses and most of the song. Did a little EQ and compression on the, the hi-hat and the snare sound. Not a lot, nothing to really write home about. The big one was the kick. So here's the raw sound of that kick drum sound. Pretty weak, right? There's no real low end, even though I was pretty close to the microphone. Part of that's from using like a, a standard clean preamp versus a nice beefy tube preamp. But not a problem. I just came in and boosted the crap out of the low end. 13 and a half dB at 220 hertz. This is a shelf. So it's actually boosting everything from 220 down. And that alone, plus a little bit of a cut in the mid-range, gave this kick drum all the beef it needed. So I'll do before, then I'll click it on. You'll hear how big it sounds. So the low end was there. It was just hiding. So we boosted it like crazy, and that worked out well in the mix. Um, that's really it for the percussion. Tambourine and shaker, I did a little bit of EQ on those, maybe. Nope, not at all. Didn't even EQ or... Sh or what did that EQ the shaker? Nope, that's just the raw recording as they stand right here. And I just pan those up the middle. So a lot of the percussion is up the middle. And then the claps I panned out left and right. So here's the rhythmic claps. I said this in the last video. Two up the middle, panning wise, two panned out left and right. And then processing wise, uh, just a little bit of boost in the upper mids and then the lows just to make them feel a little fuller and a little brighter. So here's without EQ. Here's with. A little snappier, a little punchier, which is funny because it's just claps. Uh, here are the other claps that I did on the quarter notes. They're clapping along with the kick drum. Kept them panned all up the middle. Added this distortion plug-in, which I have set to mix. We're hearing mostly distortion and a little bit of the original signal. Really set it to hard tube, which is just really overdriven. And here's what that sounded like. So it does a compression thing, right? You can hear more of the room, which is what I wanted, um, but it also adds some grit to it. So they go from sounding like this to sounding like this. Just to me, it's kind of cool and interesting. There's a little too much mid-range there, so I use the uh, the fat channel to EQ out. Oops, let's undo that. To EQ out some of the mid-range at 700 hertz and then boost some of the upper mids and boost a little bit of lows. So they went from sounding like this to this. So it wasn't quite so much mid-range there. And it really com it complements, at least I think it, it does, the kick drum really well. So all that percussion together sounds like this. Acoustic guitars got a fair amount of treatment. I wanted them to be full without being too having too much low end. So I sat closer to the microphone. The original guitar, I turned the lows down quite a bit because I didn't want it to be too thick. Here's the original guitar sound. I'll just play these original and then show you the EQ sounds. Here's the original. Here's the mixed. A little brighter, a little clearer. Boosted some highs, took away some mids, took away some lows, evened it out pretty well. Here's the left guitar. Here, I'll put up the middle for a second. Here's the raw track. Here's EQ. Took a little lows and mids out just to smooth it out. It was a little boomy down there. And then here is the far right guitar. This is that open tuning one. Here it is without any EQ. So in this EQ, I don't know how well you can see it, boosted the lows and then cut the mids a lot and boosted the highs a little bit. So just to kind of make it a little, little, get a little more beef out of it. So here's the raw recording. Here's the EQ'd recording. 
didn't do a whole lot, honestly. It added a little touch more low end. And in the overall guitar bus, where all three are playing, I added this EQ, which just, as I listened to the mix later on, it had a little bit too much low end, and a little, little too much mid range and low mids. So I used this to overall EQ those guitars. So here they are without the EQ. That was kind of a game changer EQ that came late in the mix. Um, just made them go from sounding a little woofy to sounding full and awesome. Lead vocal really quickly, I used a compressor as a de uh, If you've never seen that before, you can set the compressor to just listen to everything above 6K and it acts like a compressor or acts like a de -esser. Then I used the, uh, the, let's see, 1176 compressor with a little EQ. EQ again, boosted some lows, cut some mids, boosted some upper mids, boosted some highs, just kind of made it sound good. And then I added a multi-band compressor. This was this is one I've started doing a lot more. That's mainly looking at this two to four K range that gets a little nasal and a little harsh. Part of that's probably a cheaper preamp. Part of that's just my voice. Part of it's just life. And it helped to kind of tame that out. So here it is with no processing on it. Life is one big disappointment. So it's a little, it's a little light. It's a little thin. Life is one big disappointment. I wanted some fullness and some aggression, and I wanted it to feel smoother. So with those three processors, it sounds like this. Life is one big disappointment. You can see this. This uh, life is one big disappointment. So, multi band compressors are confusing. I, I should probably cover this in another video. But, real quickly, what's happening is this band of this is a compressor that's just listening to 2 to 4K or 2 to 5K. So, it's listening to this. Life is one big disappointment. That sort of frequency that jumps out on a lot of vocals when they sing louder, it's annoying and it hurts. So that is taking care of that. So when I sing those louder notes, it turns them down. But when I'm singing all quiet and sultry in the verses, on the ground. it's not doing anything. And when no on the doing a little bit, but mostly it's not hitting it nearly as hard as it does in the choruses. And that's it. I did a little just standard bus compression on my mix bus. Nothing crazy there. And then I slapped a limiter on it at the end to make sure it worked well and was loud enough for the final release. And that is it. I know I went through this quickly. Um, I, I didn't want to make this a 45 minute video because it took me less time to mix the song than the video would take. But hopefully that gives you an overview, gives you some ideas, some things to try. If you have questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I may not remember every setting that I use, but I've given you a good overview. Speaking of mixing and oh, oops, sorry, camera and overviews and talking about how to how to kind of approach mixing. If you feel like you're scrambling a little bit, you don't quite know where to start and how to finish a mix, you need to check out my five-step mix guide. Go to fivestepmix.com. It's a free guide, and it walks you through in just a few pages my process for starting a mix and the five steps that I go through in every single mix. It'll help you stay focused, it'll help you finish, and it'll probably help you mix faster and get better mixes. So go check it out, fivestepmix.com. And thanks for watching. I appreciate you. See ya. I'll get back up and fight I'll get back up and fight